thing uh, is the, the, the we get is the Council of Oxford in 1177, which was co called, among other things, <coughs> to sort out how is this vast lordship of Leinster to be organised because it was now um, escheated to the uh, to, to, to the king, uh, but be because of the minority, the king stepped in and he took over the administration. And then we have a very good account of how that was done in Wendover's Chronicle. And we get North Leinster is centred on Dublin, is granted to Hugh de Lacey, and virtually the whole of the medieval county, which hadn't yet been invented. Oh dear. Yet, yeah, yeah, no. I'm getting into trouble uh, here. I don't want to go back through it. I want to go down again. To the Lordship of Leinster. Oh, so, if I could do that, ah, that does it, that does it. Uh, Lord Washer, <laughs> I'm not happy about this thing. De Lacey gets this lot with Kildare and all of the, all the whole of an enormous county, uh, including uh, uh, Wicklow. Uh, and then the second part of it is granted to Fitzalbyn, uh, who is the king's, well, his, his steward in Ireland, I suppose what later would be called the Justice Steward. And he gets Wexford, uh, pretty much the whole of, of Wexford County, the various places mentioned in it, and the services of what would later be the medieval county of Carmel. And that is the second. The third one there goes to Robert Le Pur, who is based in Waterford, and he gets the whole of the, what was later the Royal County of Waterford, going to including this more, but also the land of Ossery. Now the interesting thing about all this is that when it came to uh, governing Leinster in, after Strongbow's death, it's governed from the sea coast. It's from Dublin, it's from Wexford, it's from Waterford. Not from the interior. And so one is left with the overwhelming impression that although, um, although Strongbow had begun laying the foundations for uh, government, if you like, uh, in, within the interior, it was very much an unfinished job. And that is rather confirmed by the language in which Wendover writes about this uh, division of Leinster. He talks a lot about the services of X, Y, and Z, mainly in, in, in the more settled areas of south, south central Wexford, in, in, in Carlow, uh, and in parts of uh, East Kildare. They, they talk about the sort of the normal feudal language. But in, in Ossery and parts of Carlow and um, and, and west to there, you would hear it's always about the terra, the land of, which suggests that while it's in some sort of lordship is exercised over it, it's not really penetrated yet in terms of settlement and development. So when Strongbow snuffs it, um, you, you've got very much a task that has just begun, an enormous task to govern this huge uh, lordship. Am I running out of time? Don't do about ten minutes. Ten minutes, all right. Uh, so um, the, then, what happens in the interval, of course, is uh, it is even worse because the, the work of settlement goes on in Leinster. It doesn't stop for fifteen years, but it happens on in the in the among the subvassals, the barons of Leinster, and we know that Hugh de Lacy came in and he intervened and he built quite a number of castles. Uh, in mainly in, in the medieval county of Cardo and some in I think medieval county of Kildare. Um, uh, 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 and that's interesting. And Gerald makes the interesting remark that uh, in, in, in at that time, he's talking about eleven eighty or something, uh, there were very few castles built in Leinster. Again confirming the impression that Strongbow had only just begun, but he had not been able to carry the work, the great plan through to fruition.